This is video podcast 39 from learningradiology.com, osseous metastatic disease. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. Metastases are the most common malignant bone tumors. Most involve the axial and proximal appendicular skeleton, the skull, the spine, and the pelvis. Rarely do metastases occur distal to the elbows or knees. The most common sites of skeletal metastases are the humerus, the spine, the pelvis, and the femur, not necessarily in that order. Slightly less common are the skull, the ribs, and much less common, the tibia. Metastatic disease to bone is spread hematogenously. It frequently deposits where red bone marrow is found. The tumor will erode into blood vessels and then be disseminated through the capillary bed. Metastases to the spine frequently destroy the posterior vertebral body, including the pedicle first, which is called the pedicle sign. And about 90% of skeletal metastases are multiple. This is an example of the pedicle sign. We see two pedicles, one on each side, on the T9 vertebral body two pedicles on the T10 vertebral body. We're going to skip T11 for a moment, two pedicles on T12. But if we look carefully at T11, we see there's a left pedicle, but the right pedicle of T11 has been destroyed by metastatic lung cancer. This is an example of multiple hematogenously disseminated metastases from carcinoma of the prostate. We see osteoblastic metastatic deposits in the left femur, in the left pelvis, and in the right femur. Comprising 80% of all metastases to bone are four primaries. Breast cancer comprises 70% of bone metastases in women. Prostate cancer, 60% of all bone metastases in men. Lung cancer and renal cell carcinoma. Also, we can add thyroid carcinoma and primaries in the stomach and bowel. Most lesions are asymptomatic. When they are symptomatic, pain is the major symptom. Pathologic fractures may call attention to the presence of metastatic disease and will, of course, produce pain. Fractures of the lesser trochanter in adults should be considered pathologic until proven otherwise. This is an example of a pathologic fracture of the humerus in a patient with known renal cell carcinoma. The red arrow is pointing to the fracture line, and the white arrows are pointing to the osteolytic lesion on either side of the fracture that has led to this fracture. Imaging findings in metastatic disease to bone. First, they're usually multiple. In general, metastases have relatively little or no soft tissue mass associated with them. There is very frequently no periosteal reaction until at least they break through the cortex or produce a pathologic fracture. They can appear as moth-eaten, less likely as permitive, or geographic lesions. They tend to have indistinct zones of transition between them and the adjoining normal bone. They do not have sclerotic margins. They can be expansile and they can produce a soap bubbly or septated appearance. These are the three general patterns of lytic destruction. Geographic destruction is a large area of lytic disease, in this case in the right ilium. The moth-eaten pattern are multiple smaller areas of destruction of varying sizes with indistinct margins. And the least common for metastatic disease is the permeative pattern with innumerable small lytic lesions in the bone. Permeative patterns are more common in round cell lesions like leukemia, lymphoma, Ewing's, neuroblastoma. The patterns of metastatic disease fall into two major groups. Those that are primarily lytic include lung carcinoma, breast cancer, renal cell carcinoma, thyroid carcinoma, stomach and colon carcinoma. 
This is an example, which I showed you earlier, of a large geographic expansile lytic lesion with septations in the right ilium from a renal cell carcinoma. Osteoblastic metastases, bone forming metastases, come from prostate, breast, medulloblastoma, carcinoid, and seminoma. This is an example of metastatic prostate carcinoma. We can see that the L4 vertebral body is extremely dense. There are punctate densities in the right ilium and in the sacrum. Treated lytic metastases, whether it's by radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or hormonal therapy, can go on to become sclerotic. And generally speaking, no matter what the primary is, skull metastases tend to be lytic in appearance. This is an example of metastatic disease from the prostate, almost always osteoblastic in appearance, in which there are lytic metastases in the frontal bone and parietal bones of the skull. There are some unique imaging findings, even though most bone metastases tend to look similar to other metastases regardless of the primary. Lesions that are found distal to the elbows and knees are uncommon for metastatic disease. When you see these, you should think of primaries in the lung or breast. Expansile and lytic lesions, those that have a soap bubbly appearance, you should think of primaries such as renal cell carcinoma or thyroid carcinoma. This is a lesion in the right humerus, which is unbelievably expansile, lytic, destructive. You can see that there are septations within the lesions, and this is metastatic disease from a renal cell carcinoma, though it could be from thyroid as well. Diffuse skeletal sclerosis or multiple round, well-circumscribed sclerotic lesions, you should think of either breast in a female or prostate cancer in a male. This is an example of diffuse osteoblastic metastatic disease to all of the visualized bones. They are all dense in a male with prostate carcinoma. This is a female with innumerable osteoblastic metastatic deposits in the bone. This is from breast cancer. Radiosyntographic studies, nuclear medicine bone scans, are extremely sensitive but not very specific. About 10 to 40 percent of lesions will not be visible on plain films but will be apparent on bone scans by virtue of increased uptake of the radioactive tracer. CT or MR can be used to show findings in patients with a negative conventional radiograph and a positive bone scan, and MR is used extensively for that purpose now. This is an example of an anterior and posterior radionuclei bone scan in a patient with diffuse osteoblastic metastases from prostate carcinoma. This is a so-called super scan in which there is so much radio tracer uptake in the skeletal system that the kidneys, which normally are visible because they excrete the radioactive tracer, are no longer visible. Complications of metastatic disease include pathologic fractures. It is said that it takes destruction up to 50% or more of the bone to suggest the presence of an impending pathologic fracture but it's frequently very difficult to predict an impending fracture. There may be spinal cord compression, and treated lytic mets may become sclerotic with treatment, not a complication, but something that can produce confusion. Here's another example of a pathologic fracture in a patient with lung cancer. We see that there is a diagonal fracture through the humerus surrounded by a geographic area of lytic destruction with indistinct margins. This is a T1 weighted sagittal MRI of the spine, which shows that the marrow in T11, the yellow arrow, has been replaced by tumor, and there is extension of the tumor to the cord. The cord is being compressed. Now it's time for your mini quiz. Make sure that you pause your computer or MP3 player. This is a 68-year-old man with pelvic pain. Where do you think the most likely primary is? 
Well, there is diffuse sclerosis of all of the visualized bones, which makes carcinoma of the prostate the most likely primary. Here's another case. This is a 51-year-old female with shoulder pain. We're showing you a close-up of the clavicle. Where would you say the most likely primary was? Well, due to the expanded nature of this lytic lesion, the two most likely primaries would be either renal cell carcinoma or thyroid carcinoma. This is a patient with metastatic thyroid carcinoma.